pre-diabetes. Suppose somebody has uh, a blood glucose between 100 and 125 milligram in fasting and or a blood glucose between 140 and 200 milligram at 2 hours, it is considered pre-diabetes. Suppose if the blood sugar crosses 125 in fasting and crosses uh, 200 milligram after food, then it is a frank diabetes. But those people who are in the gray zone of uh, preclinical diabetes are also more among uh, adult population in India. So when you take diabetes as well as preclinical diabetes between uh, about 25 years, it's almost like 50% of the population are either diabetic or pre-diabetes. The problem with pre-diabetes is they are not diabetic now, they don't require medicine now, but in another 5 to 10 years they may become diabetic and they may require treatment. So that's an issue. And uh, it's also seen uh, in some of the uh, research studies that uh, some of this population with pre-diabetes, though they are not frank diabetes, they are more prone or equally prone for developing heart disease. So we are not very sure about that. but. We have to be very cautious if somebody has pre-diabetes, he should not be left alone. Uh, though we cannot give them uh, anti-diabetic, the diabetic medicine, we do have some medicines to reduce their insulin resistance, some other problems in pre-diabetes, so that they can be protected from developing uh, di diabetic related complications. Then coming to those people above 60 years and 65 years, the, the senior citizens and the elderly population, Diabetes is uh, very common in this population and uh, when you take people above 65 years, it's almost like 50% of the population above 65 years are diabetic and if you take people above 75 years, it's almost like 75% of the diabetic uh, general population are diabetics. So diabetes is uh, uh, directly related to the age. Between 40 to 64 years, the highest prevalence rates of diabetes are seen. And above 75 years is almost like 75% of the people are uh, diabetic. Uh, but uh, we don't have to be very aggressive in managing people in elderly population, especially 75 years, if they are diabetic, unless they have complications. Suppose they have one of the complications of diabetes like a heart disease or a kidney disease or some infection, yes, we do have to treat them seriously. But if they don't have any complication and if they have mild diabetes, that means blood sugar is nearer to 125 in fasting and 200 in uh, two hours, uh, just a borderline diabetes, we don't have to treat them aggressively like in uh, young children or in young adults. In young adults and in young children, we are very aggressive with the treatment. Uh, just, just by touching a blood glucose value of 125 in fasting or 200 in uh, postprandial or uh, after food. We have to be aggressive in young adults and uh, yeah, children with uh, diabetes. In elderly population, we don't have to be very aggressive because it's important that they should have their nutrition, they should have their uh, other parameters related to digestion. And if you tell a person about 75 years to do dieting or exercise at that age, it may be detrimental, it may be harmful to him in, uh, in different ways. So uh, the way, the, the, the procedures for investigation as well as treatment varies uh, differently in children, in young adults, in adults and in elderly population. So diabetes is age related disease. And uh, sometimes we say that diabetes is a age-related symptom. We, we, we don't even call diabetes as a disease. Uh, it is a age-related symptom. And in some people, it may occur early, uh, something like graying of hair or something like falling of teeth or uh, folding of the skin. So it may occur early in some population. It may occur with age in some population. So age is an important risk factor for uh, diabetes. Mm -hmm.